Welcome back to the Mentor Course Management System. We're going to focus on student work and in particular on assignments. There's a lot of uh, functionality here that we want to go over. Uh, and then the next video is going to go to tests and surveys. So I'm going to click on assignments. This is a past course, so uh, I've got uh, a lot of data here, and that's why I chose this course. Um, we're going to pick on this paper, the DAX paper. You can see here mentors listing the assignments, whether they're visible to the students, uh, any due dates that have been put in, whether they're group assignments. Click on paper, and this is the view assignment page. Uh, and there's a lot of variables uh, that allow you to configure the assignment uh, to, to behave exactly as you want it to behave. Every assignment uh, has a title, it has a type. Uh, there's a whole variety of types, so if I click on paper, I can change the type. And so these are different types of assignments uh, that are in the system, kind of categories of the kind of assignment that you're, you're doing. Um, assignment number, uh, whether the, the assignment is visible, whether to display the description, and so forth. Uh, some dates, due dates, you can set an automatic on date, and the assignment is not visible. Uh, until that date uh, time passes, you can set an automatic upload off date, and that will prevent students from submitting their, the assignment uh, electronically after that date time value. So there's a lot of different variables here. Uh, weight of the assignment, uh, whether students can submit electronically, and so forth, as well as uh, the actual text of the assignment. There is a documents page for each assignment, and uh, on this page you can upload files. In this case, I just the description of it was sufficient, but you can upload files to the documents folder for each assignment, and that will uh, mentor will then display those files to the students. So uh, you can communicate to them the text of the assignment, a case, or anything, anything, any supporting documentation for the assignment. Now, uh, Mentor uh, has a grade sheet for every assignment. Uh, it, whether or not it's a graded assignment, uh, it has to have a grade sheet. So uh, you don't have to use the grade sheet to input the grades, but uh, it's a requirement for Mentor. Uh, so I'm going to go to the grade sheet on this particular assignment. Uh, again, you can see I've got last names mixed out here so that um, we can protect the identity of the students because this is real data from Fairfield University, my own class. Uh, and you can see here the student has uh, a grade and a percentage score and mentors listing each draft. I allow my students to submit multiple drafts and so mentor handles multiple drafts. You can set the assignment not to receive multiple drafts and just accept one file per student. In this case the student submitted the first draft and then this copy which is marked graded uh, is, is the is, is a copy of that first draft in which I wrote my comments. Uh, so I use revision marking and I download the file, write my comments on the paper, and then upload the file back to the student's account. Uh, and then they can retrieve that, get my comments, and then use those hopefully to improve the paper when they rewrite it. Um, I also use rubrics in grading my students. So you can see here there's a rubric score here and a rubric score on the second time. So this student improved and actually did quite well in the assignment. Um, so I'm going to click here just to show you what the rubric looks like. Uh, each rubric is attached to a particular file. Uh, and so Mentor keeps track of the successive um, uh, uh, applications of the rubrics uh, for, for the student. Uh, Mentor calculates grades, and I'll come back to this after we look at the content of the rubric itself. Um, this is a rubric that I defined. I created it for this assignment, so I defined these particular course objectives, and then I defined the rubric traits that I use to evaluate those course objectives. Um, so in this case, I scored this as nine points uh, for argument construction and so forth. The student did very well. Uh, the red check marks is how I graded this student on their previous draft. So that would have been up on this particular draft here. Um, and so I can see as I'm grading the rewrite how they were graded last time. Uh, and so that's important to be consistent and so forth. Um, Mentor will handle any uh, scale that you want, any number of rubric traits. Uh, so it's really kind of wide open how you want to construct your rubrics. Uh, I'm not going to go into the actual construction of rubrics uh, in this segment, um, but uh, you can see that it's quite flexible in terms of uh, how you set things up. Uh, there's a comments field. I don't know if I wrote comments in this particular student's case, uh, but I, you can simply type in your comments uh, here on each rubric trait. So it's a way to give additional feedback to the students. Um, 
Mentor then sums up the grades. The rubric traits are weighted. So you can see argument construction is times three. You can see synthesis is times four. Introduction is only times one and so forth. So this gives some uh, weighting. So there's a lot of flexibility in terms of how you how the rubric calculates grades. Uh, Mentor just takes those weighted scores, sums them up and uh, also sums up the total possible points and then calculates a, uh, a an absolute percentage grade which is simply 163 divided by 171 it also calculates a class high percentage grade it takes the highest score in the class and I think in this case it was 170 rather than 171 uh, and calculates a class high percentage score so you can give a little curve to the students uh, if that's your choice once you've uh, done the grading with the rubric, uh, there's a function on the update grade sheet to actually record those rubric score grades, and Mentor will take that uh, highest grade and populate it into the percentage field and then calculate the appropriate letter grade. Uh, if you don't like the grade that the rubric uh, calculated, you can change it. You can gerrymander it. You can just overwrite it, uh, change the letter grade, etc. So that helps you, uh, gives you, gives you the flexibility that you need because rubrics sort of lock you in uh, in terms of certain kinds of structures of grading. Um, you can control whether the students uh, see the grades or are hidden. You typically don't return the grades to the students until you've got them all graded. You can also just display to the students those graded files, uh, the ones that have your comments, but not show them any grades. Um, so again, a lot of flexibility on the grade sheet. You can, uh, let's go back, uh, cancel out of this, and uh, we'll go back to the assignment and uh, there's also a view of the student files here where you can see all of the files at once and you can actually zip and download all of the files or just a selection of the files so if I just want these files and I want to download them all at once it will zip those up into an archive and send that archive to the browser you can also delete files uh, there's also a function to zip to upload a zip archive of student files back and Mentor will parse them out and put them into the right student. Um, one other thing I want to go to go through here is just the outcomes uh, and rubrics. Uh, this page uh, is, is for linking this assignment to outcomes. So this is a set of outcomes that are defined by our College of Arts and Sciences and the checks indicate that I have link this assignment to those particular outcomes, personal values, applying course material, oral written expression, etc. These, these outcomes are defined by the College of Arts and Sciences and mapped to a, a whole set of courses. These outcomes are my own instructor defined outcomes and so they only belong just to my course. Um, and uh, if there are rubrics defined for any of these outcomes, I can select those rubrics into my rubric uh, my grading rubric. Um, again, I'm not going to go into the details of that, but wanted to show you uh, how assignments get linked to learning outcomes, whether they're program outcomes uh, or instructor-defined outcomes. Uh, later, when we talk about assessment, uh, in particular program assessment, we'll see how this data can be useful to the program. You get aggregate counts uh, based on this data. And uh, that's pretty much it for assignments. Uh, there's a copy function and so forth. You can, uh, back on the assignments page, import assignments uh, from uh, other courses in the past or current courses, etc. Uh, obviously, create new assignments, reorder the assignments and such. So if you have uh, any questions, feel free to contact us. Uh, some of the features are outlined on our course management page. Uh, send us an email, uh, give us a call, we'd be happy to talk to you. Uh, and uh, the next installment will be about tests and surveys.